How do you say it? D-U-E-R-S-T. Did you remember Durst is the worst? Ah! Durst the worst, bitch! Durst the worst, bitch! Durst the worst, bitch! Hi. Thank you for having me here. I heard you talk about Trayvon Martin. The truth is, when it all came out, Mr. Zimmerman had a right to defend himself. Michael Brown in Ferguson, and I was in Ferguson the next day, the day after that happened, two days after that happened, sorry, spoke to some officers, and I know they can be one-sided. The truth is, after the investigation, the, the officer was, quite frankly, found innocent of any wrongdoing. There are 81 major metropolitan areas in America, 81, New York City being the biggest, Madison, Wisconsin, ironically, is the smallest of the 81. In every one of those 81 cities, there are black men killing each other every day. So if black men are doing this to black men, and white men aren't making them do it, doesn't it start at home? You're absolutely right. It does start at home. That's the first institution where, absolutely, I agree with you, totally. So because you agree with me, let me, let me finish, though. Let me finish. You're absolutely right. It starts at home. But once that child leaves home, who protects that child out in the street that someone is praying on? We need more protectors instead of perpetrators. Because you're right, it does start at home. Just like with my son, a student. All the way through school, a student, but as soon as he hit middle school, peer pressure, uh, opposite, uh, uh, he started to get infractions that wasn't even uh, on his record with MPS. So if he didn't have advocate parents okay. working in his behalf, he could have fell through the system just by the stroke of a pen where it disadvantaged your black child because of his actions. We're not given mercy and grace. We're not privileged. We're looked at as a criminal from the get-go. So those preconceptions matter. Not everybody it's knows a, that. It's though. a generational not everybody thing, knows sir. That. It's a generational thing. And once we come to terms with what's going on and seeing it through someone else's lens, then you'll quite understand. I can't understand where you're coming from because I'll you're coming from, from a Caucasian point of view. I'm coming from, from an African-American point yeah. of view. So we're going to have two different views, but the, my thing is let's get together and work it out. There's no need for uh, uh, ambiguity here because you know what? There, there At the end of the day, we're all God's see. children, whether I'm black, brown, purple, or polka dot. I'm a child of God. And if I'm a child of God, I'm unapologetic about who I am and how I look. But that doesn't mean my question isn't viable. It's oh, right. absolutely. So, so can, I, can, I, can, I, can I respond? Absolutely. Let me respond a little bit to your question. I want to respond a little bit to your question. And I, and I will say this. I will say this. You are right that in both investigations, the police officers were deemed to be within the, the letter of the law, right? Yeah. So we can agree on that. No, my. The, but give me one second, right? Zimmerman wasn't a cop, right. but he, the stand your ground law was right. what he, he, he got you know, away with, and you know, basically, know. because that's a law in that space. Not white. The problem with your argument, really, is that laws weren't created with black people in mind in the first place. Or let me take that back. They were created with black people in mind, but to not be able to be, you know, to excel and be successful was really, so if you do some history, right, um, the police departments were really formed primarily out of the fugitive slave laws, right? So that was, you know, the fugitive of slaves laws were what, you know, white people who owned slaves and wanted Why slavery to exist. Slavery? Um, they really put that in because if, if a slave escaped, the law was that you could take a slave back to its rightful owner. So when you think about the way that our society is built, and if our society is supposed to be all-encompassing of all people because we are a nation of immigrants, then you should look at that and say, well, if we are a nation of immigrants, then why treat those people or these people different than everybody else? Because if you are a maverick and you're here and you're all about justice and equality, and, and, and if you're an American and you're a patriot, we are all immigrants. The difference is, is that we, you know, me as a black man, right, I understand that my roots are in Africa. I know this 100%. Most white people just say that they're white. I know I'm an African-American male. My roots are in Africa. Most white people say that we're just white. And white is even the concept of white is a construct, right? 
Because if every white person in here say, you know what, hey, I'm Irish, you know, or I'm German, or I'm this and that and the other, then the concept of white would not exist. It would be you are representing where you come from because that's what gives you your identity, is the place where you are from. And so for black people, it, we, have, we have had to look at this placement, if you want to call it that. This placement and basically make lemon out of lemon, I mean, let me make lemonade out of lemons. You know, so if you could imagine, you know, somebody saying, you know what, let's say, let's use the concept of a race, right? A natural physical race, you know, people running track. And you had all these people line up. And you say, you know what, this is America, pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, you can come here and you can make it, and, you know, that's supposed to be the status quo. Gun goes off. Lane one and two, you can go, right? So you've got a head start on everybody else that's three through six. And then if they say, you know what, three, you can go. And then four, five, six, might have to wait a little bit. Imagine how much traction all of these other people are getting in this race to be able to win something that was supposed to be fair to everyone. So when you think about those things, again, the, the laws were what they were, but at the end of the day, just because their laws don't mean that they're right. That's right. And as a people, that's when we're supposed to come together and say, you know what? I get it. I get that that's the law. But if you have a law that says you can stand somewhere, take somebody's life because you felt like there was a threat, even if they didn't necessarily have too much of a, of a verbal, I mean, a physical inter, you know, encounter with you, and you're able to shoot someone, that's a law that we need to get rid of. Because lives matter. You have to see that. Can I have a mic, please? I really want to give a lot of, there's a lot of hands up ask, here. Let me just ask this. If you have to, if no, no, you have no, no, to triage I, the sir, problem. Sir, Dell, listen, I, I, really, I really need to move us on. I, you got course. a good question. You got right. some great answers to it. So I just want to make we're sure I'm giving other people. Yeah, we we're being honest. Right. Okay. Okay. I'm going to this lady right here. I don't know whose hand went up first. Hi, I'm Hermit St. Jacques, and my comment is, we people always talk about black on black crime. What about white on white crime? Why is that Have you looked at FBI white statistics? White Most people Have you looked at crime, crime statistics? commit crimes against people who look like them, oh right? Gosh. Mostly people who they encounter in their neighborhoods, etc. All right. Another thing, 70 people over one weekend in Chicago. Right, because crime has been 70 people down. over one yeah, weekend in Chicago. And the news, etc., it's all about murders, it's all about, you know, crime. And we don't realize that actually crime has been going down and crime is at historically low, okay? But this whole idea about black on black crime isn't supposed to distract us from what we're really talking about, right? right? And if we think about white on white crime, that's a lot of white on white crime going on. But so I just want to point that out. You're lying. You're straight up lying. You're lying in a church. You're lying in a church. Straight up. You're lying to everybody in this room. Straight up. I honest. I was invited, and I wanted to be honest. But you would start the discussion by saying, well, you know, Black on black crime is way higher per way capita higher. than every other no, race combined. Not, you know than every that. other race combined. You're, you're, that, yeah, but that's not our issue. And that's <laughs> of course it's not. You know, of course it's not. The reason that we're here is we want to talk that's the about problem. support justice. That's right. And Me you, too. And no, you don't. You well, we're the old tell me to what agitate. Happened. You're here to no, agitate. No, no, I'm here to be you honest. You started out talking I'm, about... I'm, gonna, I'm just going to break it for a second. Mark. Just just in terms of process, we, we've got so many different people here. Um, so that in terms of process, we really want to be talking about on the on the idea level. We, it's just it's going to get really difficult if we try to have one-on-one -on -one conversations um, with this many people. It's just not very a very good forum for that. So if someone has a comment, you're welcome to make it. I, I, we did invite you here, and you have every right to make your comment. I hope you got some, uh, I mean, you did get some answers. You may not agree with those answers. Um, if you have a particular comment, you're welcome to make it. But we, we have to be able to, just for this particular forum, we have to be able to keep uh, keep the mic moving so people can I can't. Uh, too make their sense, statements. dude. Thank you. It's just lies, dude. Subscribe, bitch!